many people have not yet heard the good news of Jesus. Others have left the church. Some scandalized by the sins of its members. The social services of our church, health and education and others, while very good in some areas, are also deteriorating in other areas. And there is so much violence and abuse in our world. Who will protect the children? And there are many other concerns. These are the many puzzles, many pieces of the puzzle we have come here to discuss and to start to put together, assemble into a better picture. <coughs> May the Holy Spirit guide us in this task. Come on, the belly see. You plug on the Hamamas, and the weak like Jesus Christ, and the belly see Namamas, and idea is, you know, people somehow are trying to lose their Catholic faith. And you see all kinds of things happening, rascals, marriages breaking down, uh, all kinds of immoral activities going on. People are not interested in the church anymore. So in this conference in the next coming few days, until Saturday, we are coming together, you know, people are coming from the two countries, from different sectors of their work in the church we will sit down and we will discuss on certain topics. The presenters or people who are going to present will present certain topics for discussion. And from the discussion, there will be questions given to what is called group discussion. And from the group discussion, they will come up with what we call propositions and maybe what we call uh, decisions to improve the situation in our Papua New Guinea uh, Catholic Church and the Solomon Islands so that people may really know that they are Catholics and they have a role to play in participating in the work of the church. The year of faith, it has not, it, it, this is actually coming to the end. Pope Benedict XVI designated the year of faith from the 11th of October 2012 to the 24th of November 2013 to commemorate 50 years since the start of the Second Vatican Council and 20 years since the publication of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. This is a great opportunity to celebrate and share our Catholic faith while strengthening our relationships, relationship with the Lord through prayer. A few writers have talked about circularism as a towering challenge for the church. And what is secularism? I take it to look uh, uh, again from Pope Benedict, where he defines secularization, which presents itself in cultures by imposing a world and humanity without reference to transcendence. 
is invading every aspect of daily life and developing a mentality in which God is effectively absent, wholly or partially from human life and awareness. It's, and and I, feel, I feel this is where we are at also with the church in PNG. Gone are the days when the family went together to church. When they are at home with their parents, maybe they are under the care of the parents and it's okay. But when they move away, they start to question whether God still has meaning for them. The route of my journeys on the street of Port Mosby often takes me past the rear entrance in and out of the Gordon's Market. At this particular entrance is a trash, trash collection pond into which vendors and market cleaners throw away food wrappings, unwanted vegetables, and other food stuff. Every day there are mothers with children working side by side with National Capital District Commission cleaning contractors. These mothers are not cleaning the trash pond for NCDC, but are salvaging whatever throwaway vegetables and other food stuff that they can take home for dinner from this rubbish pond. I think recently there was uh, one of the bishops from Germany who was called in by Pope Francis to explain why he is living so luxuriously when Pope Benedict is calling the church to looking at the marginalized, to look at the poor. Where do we stand with that? I used to say that our older generations were much smarter, much wiser than us. They invited the missionaries, they set them down the land, they allowed them to live on the land to promote the common good for everybody. And now the new generation coming up and are saying, our relatives never saw the land for a good price. And we have so, much, so many land disputes in our parishes, in our licenses, because of ourselves, they don't appreciate what is the common good, what is for everybody. When we talk about justice, we would like us to include something about asylum seekers. Capital punishment. Our formation 
nourishing the hills in the womb. I am a natural family planning counselor. I run counseling services in my own parish and extends in my diocese. I have clients from Lutheran Church, Anglican Church, Seventh day Adventist, Adventist Church, United Church, and Revival Churches. Where are the Catholics? What happens to that? teaching of the Catholic Church on natural family planning. We preach it, but we don't live it. I teach it, my husband teaches it, my children teach. What is going on? What they say about the family. Uh, I've been part-time in counseling in St. Joseph International. This year, 85 students were sent for counseling. Among them, 65 of them are coming from um, some separated pins, the problem. So they, the students, the young people, they don't find communion in the family. So they are not brought to church and they are not brought to any other church activities. So uh, my concern is that whether we could look at something to do there first in the, the families and in the relationship. Assembly, it is important that we do a deeper reflection on its implication, especially of this word communion. When we ask ourselves what is communion, sometimes it is very difficult. And even for many Catholics, communion at least is understood often on the theme of Holy Communion. But communion is even deeper than what we think. It's not just receiving Holy Communion, but it's wider than that. It's a mystery. It's deeper. And it is almost the core uh, nature of the church. So I think it is very important, as we are talking yesterday, that we understand what communion means for us and how do we uh, apply or live communion in a concrete way. Communion is at the heart of the relationship, as we have. And therefore, I believe very, very much 
that if communion has to be something true and deep, we have to first and foremost have programs to for, for self understanding, of self knowledge. Because if we don't, I don't care whatever relationship it is, it's going to be a problem. And our problems today are related to not ourselves understanding who we are at the bottom. So therefore our relationships a lot of problems today because of changes as well. This is a relationship. Sometimes we are giving hosts on Sunday, we don't even know those palestinians. So the challenge is, we need to know, here when we talk about the spirituality of the communion, we are talking about a personal relationship with God. Are they here or not? We need to have a personal relationship or some kind of relationship with our priests. So we need to take a lay claim to the priest. So this one father wrote, this one Jesus wrote. How many of us can say that? And then vice versa. How many of these priests, how many Eucharistic ministers give hosts out on Sunday knowing who they are living in? Let's start looking at our family. The call is the family. Communion is family. So us, the lay people, sitting here, fathers and mothers, who are attending now, when we go back, let's start talking to our family. Communion is family for the next future. So let's start our community. Let's boy start starting with our families. Thank you. of Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands has reframed this year, 2013, as a year of assembly of faith because it sees a common pastoral plan as an excellent way of implementing the new evangelization, achieving the goals of the year of faith and for carrying them forward in a systematic and deep process. Living the faith is not just about God and me. Through faith, we become part of the assembly, the ecclesia, which is permanently in session through Christ and at the same time a local church that meets regularly.
kudos for pastoral planning. Pastoral planning is already there. It is the plan found in the gospel and the living tradition. And it is the same as ever. Ultimately, it is centered on Christ. That is the basis of our plan. And it is based on that spirituality of communion, which helps us to transform ourselves and to transform others so that we can be able to journey and to fulfill our mission, our final destination in the heavenly Jerusalem. Since yesterday and today, in all our reports, I hear the diocese should do this, must do this, and so forth. But or the church should do this, must do this. So my question is, where are we putting the church? Is the church out there and we are not outside of the church? The diocese, where is the diocese? Is it out there and we are behind? I must admit that I'm feeling sorry for the missions. They cannot do everything. So if we say we are the church, Alive in Christ, enthusiastic. Can we put our gifts together as a church? I see so many good things that are there. So my question is, this is a general assembly, so I take the assembly with me to my diocese, or is it an uh, international conference plan? So what plan should I take to my diocese? If you leave me, I will take a lot of things in there. Very nice things. So, should I go and plan my own uh, with the good things that you came up with? So, although there's a lot of talking and a lot of planning and a lot of decision making, we believe that it is primarily an experience. Not talking about communion, not theologizing about it, but living it. To remember the past, celebrate the present, and plan together for the future. It can be a moment of repentance for failures, such as our tendency to act alone, to compromise our values as individuals, communities, parishes, dioceses, and the church in our region of the world. It can be a time of humble celebration of achievements and what God has done through us, especially when we work together. It will be a chance to explore the blockages and obstacles that hold us back. Supported by faith, we can look with hope at our commitment in the world as we await the new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Thank you. 
discussing um, any form of the assembly. General Assembly, members of the General Assembly, I now propose that we are going to vote for what we have been discussing so far with the proposals now in front of us. Everyone, including me and the chair, chair ladies and chair members here, everyone will vote. So your hands up for coming. Yeah, if you all agree that the resolution should be accepted by the assembly, let's step on it.
because we are not afraid to ask. Have me some water that I may never be thirsty again. Declaring this platform assembly close of today. 